Welcome, little scientists. It's Miss Jisa. I am so happy that you've joined me today. We've been talking about snails and slugs all week, and today I, the story is called Slugs and Snails, written by Claire Llewellyn and Barry Watts. What are snails and slugs? Slugs and snails belong to a large family of animals called mollusks. A mollusk is a creature with a soft, slimy body, which is often protected by a shell. Slugs and snails are very alike. The big difference between them is that snails have shells and slugs do not. More than half of all slugs and snails live in the sea. The others live in freshwater rivers and ponds or in shady places on land. There are over 60,000 different kinds of slugs and snails. Some of them are too small to see. Others are as long as your arm. Most slugs are not very pretty. Some are colorful like the sea slug from Florida. Where do they live? Slugs and snails live in many places. Some live in the woods where there is always food and shelter. Grove snails can cling to rocky hillsides or steep cliffs. Slugs live in grassy meadows. The great pond snail lives at the bottom of ponds. Slugs and snails are easy to find in gardens and parks. They come out when it is cool, early in the morning or late at night. They also come out after a shower of rain. During the day, they hide under trees and bushes, among fallen leaves, or under piles of rocks or garbage. In the daytime, snails rest against walls and fences or hide inside pots and under stones. Slugs have no shells, so they can squeeze under loose bark or burrow into the ground. Let's look at the snail's body. Slugs and snails have very similar bodies. The soft, rubbery part is called the foot. It is covered with a sticky coat of slime. This helps the animal move and cling onto windows and walls. You can see the tentacles, the head, the mouth, the eyes, the foot, and the sole, the main parts of a snail. Slugs look just like this, except for the shell. The mantle is a thick fold of skin on top of the foot. It has a small breathing hole that can open and close. In snails, the mantle helps build the shell. Slugs and snails have two pairs of tentacles on their heads. At the end of the longer pair are tiny eyes. The shorter pair picks up smells and tastes. Moving along. Slugs and snails move by swimming along on a smooth layer of slime. Slime makes it much easier to move on rough ground. The slime also protects the sole of the foot from getting torn. Slugs and snails leave silver trails behind them. These trails show up in the morning before they have dried up and disappeared. These silvery slime trails in the picture show where the slugs have been. Slugs and snails creep along on the sole of their foot. Muscles in the foot ripple forward to lift each part of the body. The animal glides along. A slug leaves its trail on a leaf in the picture up top. The bottom picture shows the sole of a snail's foot. Most snails move at about 33 feet per hour. It would take a snail more than six years to travel from New York City to Cleveland, Ohio. Let's look at the snail's shell. A snail builds its own shell. As the snail gets older, its shell grows bigger. The mantle makes new layers of shell and adds them to the end. The new shell is thin and brittle at first, but it quickly hardens. As it grows bigger, the shell curls around a spiral called a whorl. Snail shells can be tall and narrow or short and wide. They can be smooth and glossy or rough and dull. Most shells have colored flecks or stripes, but some are plain. 
A snail can put its whole foot inside its shell. This protects it from enemies. It also keeps its body moist when the weather is cold or very dry. Most slugs and snails feed on animal droppings, fungi, and dead animals and plants. They eat by rubbing their foot with a long, narrow tongue called a radula. The radula works like a cheese grater. It is covered with rows of tiny teeth that shred the solid food. Some slugs and snails are pests in gardens and on farms. They chew holes in green plants and can destroy young seedlings. They eat soft berries and other fruit or spoil it with their slime. Slugs destroy plants by chewing holes in them. The tip of the radula is always wearing out and breaking off. This is okay because the other end never stops growing. How about mating? Slugs and snails do not have to mate to have young. Most of them have both male and female parts in their body so they can make eggs on their own. They still prefer to find a mate though. Slugs and snails usually mate in the summer. These two slugs make a lot of slime and then lie very close to one another. A few weeks after mating, both animals lay their eggs. Eggs are laid mostly in the summer and fall. In the fall, there is less danger of the eggs drying up. Slugs and snails lay between 20 and 100 eggs the eggs lie hidden in soil among dead leaves or under logs and stones. The eggs look like tiny balls. Some are soft and clear. Others have a chalky white shell. Slug and snail eggs hatch in batches. The first batch hatches in about three weeks. The next batch hatches a month or two later. More batches hatch as time goes on. Sometimes a whole batch of hatchlings is eaten by enemies are killed by dry weather. Spreading the hatching and batches gives the young a better chance to survive. The newly hatched slugs and snails look just like their parents. They grow quickly as they feed. Most are full grown by the end of a year. The largest kind takes up to four years. Many slugs and snails die before they are able to lay eggs of their own. Only five eggs in 100 will survive to become an adult. Some slugs and snails live for 50 years, but most of them have very short lives. They end up as meals for other animals. Who are their enemies? Well, slugs have many enemies. They are eaten by hedgehogs, shrews, frogs, toads, worms, and some fierce beetles. All these animals are a gardener's friends because they bring down the number of slugs. Many snails are eaten by birds. Some birds have learned to break the shell and get at the snail inside. A blackbird can easily smash a shell with its beak. The song thrush uses a stone to break a snail's shell. Birds do not like a snail's sticky slime because it gums up their beak. They wipe the body on the ground before eating it. A long rest. In the winter, snails and slugs take a long rest. This is called hibernation. The plants they need for food and shelter die in the cold weather. Snails and slugs sleep so they can survive. In some parts of the world, snails take a summer nap to survive long spells of hot, dry weather. Some snails here in California have slept for eight years. Snails often hibernate in clusters. They become active in the spring when the air starts getting warmer. To protect themselves in the winter, snails tuck their feet inside their shells and seal the door with slime. The slime soon dries as hard as leather. Water cannot escape from the animal's body. Slugs burrow into the soil or under logs or stones during the winter. Here are some snail and slug surprises, things you may not know about them. Most water snails take in oxygen from the water. Some can also come up to the surface and breathe oxygen in the air. Some people enjoy eating snails cooked with butter and garlic. They use a special fork to get the snail out of the shell. 
Snails are strong. They can lift 10 times their own weight. That is like a person carrying 20 big sacks of potatoes. Slug and snail races are popular. The world's fastest racer is the banana slug, which crawls at about two miles per hour. The largest snail is the African giant snail. It measures up to 15 inches long, as long as your arm. Its shell measures over 11 inches, about as long as this book. And the giant snail weighs the same as a big bag of sugar. Wow. A snail from Brazil has the world's longest shell. It is about four inches long. That's about the size of two of your thumbs. In 1846, a dead desert snail had spent four years glued to a display board in the Natural History Museum in London. It woke up and began to feed. The snail lived for another two years. Most garden snails live for about two years. People keep track of them by numbering their shells with a pen. All right, let's do an activity together where we label the body of a snail. All right, little scientists, we are going to label the snail's anatomy. And anatomy is just a fancy word for body parts. So let's take a look. Um, do you see anything that you recognize? I think one thing that humans have in common with snails that you can see on the outside are its eyes. So I'll start off by labeling its eyes. And it has two eyes, one here and one here. And then I'll go ahead and color its eyes. All right. The eyes are at the end of the tentacles. Some people call them tentacles. Some people call them eye stalks. You can do either one, either tentacle, and there are two, so you can add an S there, tentacles or eye stalks. And I'm gonna go ahead and color those. All right, another part that you probably recognize right off the bat is this outer part which is called the snail's a shell and obviously i'm not coloring these the colors that real snails are you can color these any any way you want i just want to make sure that you know the different parts of the snail, the snail's anatomy. All right, now, we've talked about this before in our stories, the bottom, that's how the snail moves and it's called the foot. Go ahead and color the foot. All right, then, believe it or not, the snail has a heart. Now, it looks different than ours, but this is the snail's heart right there. And right above that is its kidney. And right above that, any guesses as to what that is? That actually kind of looks like the same shape as ours. That's the stomach. What about that? Any guesses? 
that's called the liver and humans have a liver as well kind of similarly shaped all right now you may laugh at this one. This right here is the snail's anus, which is where we also have an anus, we humans. That is where the poop comes out. And there are other body parts here as well, but I think we've done a good amount together. And I will see you back for some more lessons soon. Remember to hit that subscribe button so you know when our next lesson posts. And if you enjoyed this story and activity, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Thanks so much. See you next time.